Hey guys, it's Adam and I'm back with another ARM template episode. In this episode I will show you how to pass parameter consistently across multiple environments using parameter files. Stay tuned. So let's talk about parameter files. If your templates are already parameterized, this is your most convenient and consistent ways of supplying those parameters to those templates. And just like template files, they're also JSON based. Their schema is very simple to follow. You have only three properties that you need to supply, a schema, content version, and a parameter section. The only difference in a schema is the deployment parameters.json at the end. Within parameter section, you define your parameters as a simple key value mapping. In this case, the key is the name of the parameter, and the value is an object defining a single property called value and supplying the value for the parameter. And once you're done with that section, simply add the parameter suffix to the file and you're ready to go. This is a very good pattern. It's not a requirement, but it's a very convenient and very good well-known pattern to use for ARM template parameter files. There are a few principles to remember when defining parameter files. Let's take, for example, myapp.json, where we define a one parameter called account name, and this is a type of a string, and this will be our main template file. If you want to define a parameter file for this template, simply create my app parameters.json and remap that parameter section there. And the only slight difference is instead of typing type, you provide a value for your parameter. Important thing to note is that when you're creating parameters file, the parameter names must match exactly the names of the parameters defined in your main template. Otherwise, you're going to get an error during the deployment. The schemas for both files are slightly different. Just follow the documentation on what is the proper schema. When it comes to supported types, it's pretty much the same as in main templates. So you can support integer, booleans, strings, arrays, objects, or even secure strings or secure objects. In which case, my recommendation is to actually put null value there. Because if you're using secure string, you're most likely trying to pass a password or some security configuration or a key to your template. And this is not something you want to store in a flat file. If you want to use that, pretty much always set it to null. Because if you set it to null, user who will be deploying this template will be required to actually provide it during the deployment time, either using command line, portal, or maybe Azure DevOps. But if you still want to automate the deployment and still use the secure strings and pass the parameters securely, then you can use something called reference types. So far you have seen we've passed all the parameters using value, but you also can use reference. And a reference block is just an object which allows you to create a reference to a parameter that is stored externally, which in case for ARM templates has integration with Azure Key Vault, allowing you to supply an ID of the Key Vault and a secret name that should be pulled dynamically during the template deployment from the Key Vault and supplied as a parameter to this template. I will have a separate episode exactly on this feature and I will show you how to integrate your ARM templates with Key Vault to securely pass parameters, but for today we're just going to use value parameters. There are a lot of benefits that should encourage you to use parameter files, like convenience. If you build a template that requires a lot of parameters, it's very easy to pass them through parameter file. It's also very readable, it allows consistency when deploying and storing variables across multiple environments. It also reduces operational costs. If you're going to pass the templates to your teammates, it's very easy for them to deploy without really requiring him to go back to you and ask what are the sample values for your templates. There are a lot more benefits that you get out of parameter files, but for today, let's leave at that. Few demos that I have for you today are first of all, creating parameter files manually in Visual Studio Code, IntelliSense and using snippets. Later, I will show you a little trick that will allow you to automatically generate parameters files using Azure Portal. Later, I'm going to show you how to deploy those templates using Azure Portal and Azure CLI, and also how you can override the parameters from those files using Azure CLI. Let's go into the portal. Before we start deploying stuff, let's do two things that will make it more convenient for us to work on and deploy the templates. Let's go to create resource and type deployment, find the template deployment and pin it to dashboard. And do the same with our resource group. I created ARM parameter files resource group that I'm going to be deploying to. This will allow me to see everything on the dashboard and very quickly access it. And now let's go to Visual Studio Code where I'm going to create my first template. First, I'm going to create a very small template for the storage account deployment. And I'm going to pass already prepared previously template for that. This is a very 
simple storage account deployment where I'm passing one parameter storage account name, which is defined here, its type of string, and it has some basic validations. So let's create parameter file for this template. To do that, I'm gonna create another file called 01 storage parameters.json. And in here, there's several ways you can actually approach creating the parameters file. For instance, you can use snippets, just type arm p for parameters template, press enter, and this is the default schema. According to documentation, the latest schema you should use for parameters files is 2015.01.01. So let's use that and expand parameters section to start defining parameters. As you remember, the first thing you need to define is the key value pair. And the key is the name of your parameter. So just grab it from your template, paste it here, and just create an object. Within that object, as I said, you need to provide a value and the name for the account. So for instance, am demo store 01 a And that's pretty much it. We right now created a parameters file and we have a template. So let's go back to portal and start deploying that template immediately. For the first demo, let's use template deployment in Azure portal. Click on deployment tile, let's hit create, build our own template and load the file. Select the template that you just created and now review the parameters. If it's matching, then hit save and go to edit parameters. In edit parameters, you will notice something interesting. You didn't pass the parameters file now, but Azure portal automatically based on your template generated that file for you. So this is a very clever, very convenient way for you to generate the default schema for your parameters file so you don't have to do it manually. But you can also, of course, click here, load file and load your parameters file to supply the default value for your deployment. Hit save. You will find that parameter in a storage account name now. Just select the resource group, scroll down to agree to the terms and hit purchase. Once the deployment is done, you can go to the resource group to find your newly created storage account. Remember about the slight delay, so just hit refresh a couple of times. And as you see, storage account was deployed successfully using your parameter as an input. And for the second demo, let's try to do the same using Azure CLI. Let's open Cloud Shell and create a dev folder. Let's open that folder and create two files very quickly using echo command. This is zero to storage JSON and zero to storage parameters.json and open Visual Studio like editor so we can very quickly paste the templates. So let's open first the zero to storage JSON and pass the template. Just paste the template. It's always linked in the video description down below. So just grab it from the repository. And as you see in this template, we have two parameters, storage account name and storage account SKU. For the storage account SKU, notice that we also have the default value. This is very important because we're going to be using the parameters file and I want to show you how does it relate to have the default value and still pass the parameters JSON file. In here, just paste the same parameters files as previously and just save it. Notice that while the template has the storage account SKU defined as a parameter, the parameters file doesn't. So let's see how does it impact the deployment itself. So let's define a variable with our resource group name. And let's create new resource deployment using Azure CLI. To do that, I'm gonna paste a very simple command, which is az group deployment create, which creates a new deployment. I'm passing a resource group name from our parameter that was defined above. And I'm also passing template file, which in our case is 02 storage.json. And additionally, I'm passing a parameters, which is referred by at 02, because this is a file, a 02 storage parameters JSON. So simply press enter. The deployment finished successfully. Let's review what happened. First of all, we passed the parameters file using Azure CLI. The second of all, notice that we were not prompted to pass the storage account SKU. And the reason for that is because there was a default value defined in the template. Although my recommendation is if you're still defining the parameters file, always put the storage SKU there, even if it's not required, so that users at least know that this is something they can configure if they want in their templates. So just a good practice. Second of all, if you would make a typo here, if I would type storage account SKU2, and I would try to run this deployment again, notice what happens. I would get an error, an error saying that the storage account SKU2 from the parameter file is not available in the main template. 
So while some of the parameters will be optional, because you define the default value in your main template, you still cannot define any extra parameters that are not used within your main template. Remember about that. So let's fix our template. Let's provide standard LRS as a value. Let's save it. And let's do one more thing. Inside of the CLI, let's perform another deployment. But this time notice that I'm passing the parameters file, but additionally I'm again referring to the parameters and overriding storage account name as SKU and passing standard GRS as a value. Let's perform that deployment and see what happens. After about half a minute, the deployment should be finished and the expectation is that I was able to override the parameter file by giving a parameter directly in the command line because this one should take precedence. So let's hide this. Let's open our storage account. Let's refresh just to be sure. We have our demo storage 10A and go to configuration to find geo redundant storage deployed in our account. So let's do very last scenario. As I said, parameters files are great to provide a consistent way to deploy across environments. So let's run that scenario very quickly. Let's create three files this time, a zero free storage, a template, a two templates for parameters dev and parameters prod. This is a good way to provide the suffix per environment variables. Now we just open the code or just refresh on the top here and paste in the templates. Let's get more space here and paste first. Let's paste the storage template. The storage template looks pretty much the same. It's the storage account name and the SKU. Let's pass the dev parameters. And for development, we're passing parameters. And notice the difference. First of all, the storage account name is amdemo store 01 dev and the SKU is standard LRS. And for the production, we're gonna pass another parameter file. And in this one, Notice I'm passing a different name. This time it's 01 prod and I'm passing GRS. This is because for the production, I want to geo redundant storage and I want to pay more for more durability of my data. And before I move on, let's review the script that you'll paste right now. First of all, I'm gonna create two resource groups. One will be called ARM parameter files dev and one will be called ARM parameters files prod. I will create those resource groups and perform deployment passing the same template file but passing the different parameter files for each of the environment. So let's run the script in a cloud shell. And once the deployment is done, let's review the results. Let's go to our resource groups where we should find our new two resource groups created. And as you see, parameters files dev, there should be one storage account called dev. And in the configuration, you should see locally redundant storage LRS. And for production, there's a production storage account and in the configuration, you see GRS being set up. So everything works as expected. As you see with template parameter files, you are able to introduce another level of consistency when deploying your application across multiple environments. But that's it for today. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to see more and see you next time.